Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. My name is Kara Finnegan, and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw. I'm a writer, a psychologist, and also publisher of Reading the Pictures. The challenges caused by the coronavirus are causing serious dissension as we approach the beginning of the school year. We're looking at a photo by Rick Egan for the Salt Lake Tribune. The caption reads, angry residents react when the Utah County Commission meeting was adjourned before it even started. The group protesting against masks being required in schools removed the social distancing tape on the chairs and filled the Utah County Commission room to overflowing, prompting Commissioner Tanner Ang to call for a vote to adjourn the meeting in Provo on Wednesday, July 15th. I'm initially just struck by the crowded nature of this image, the congestion of all of the people in the bodies sitting so close together. And I think that initial response of mine, which I would describe as a response of anxiety, you know, it's an example of the way that we see and look differently in the context of this pandemic. Given the polarization in the country and the function of this photograph as illustrating a lot of political stories, one would be naturally drawn to the sense of anger and defiance in this crowd. But if you look at it a little more closely, especially if you study those three women on the far right in the front row, I think what you're seeing, if not overtly, certainly underneath the entire situation is confusion and fear. You can spend a lot of time roving around the room with your eyes, looking at all of the different figures in this image. It's almost a kind of tableau of citizenship, right? Playing out in this very congested space, bodies close together. You see some people with their hands over their mouths as if, you know, shouting to be heard. There are people with signs and flags. You've got people taking photographs, sharing photographs, talking to one another, mostly unmasked. So that kind of full frontal view of all the faces that provides a lot of, I'll say it, enjoyable engagement. Now, the topic itself is very serious, but there is a real kind of spectacle nature to this image. And a lot of people in this room seem to be enjoying themselves immensely. I agree. And again, there's a tendency to put this into a left-right or red-blue context and to see these people as deluded in some way because of the way they're defying social distancing. But I think what we're looking at is more a snapshot of a gaslit nation. This is a terrible situation and the failure of leadership to negotiate what to do about the school year by level of infections, by resources, is causing so much distress. That context really highlights the extent to which the mask, the presence of the mask, or the proper wearing of the mask, or the absence of the mask, has become a kind of symbol of this broader debate in general. You know, one of the first visual elements of this photograph that I was drawn to was those two women in the second row, one who looks like she's singing calling out to be heard, and the other who's leaning forward, who has notes and a pen, and clearly has some points or arguments that she wants to make. But yet right over their shoulder is written in big red capital letters, no masks. The photo is inviting everyone to not wear masks, right? The photo is making an assertion, not a condemnation of all of the people in the room who don't have masks on. And again, the mask is coming to stand for a variety of things, depending on your own position on the nature of the pandemic, on the health issues, on the issues of individual freedom in a context where there's just a vacuum of leadership. 